Yes, it's working. It's working. Is it working? <laughs> Which gives us, of course, the, the meaning um, and the importance of the, of the subjects. So I'm happy to present you the um, consultation results regarding the knowledge transfer. Now, uh, this first slide um, indicates you the, how the knowledge transfer, how it was valued in the consultation. And if you have a look at the report which was in your, in your bags, you see that knowledge transfer was considered the third uh, most important caps to be addressed in, um, in ERA, in the realization of ERA. And, uh, Actually, two-thirds of the, of the people who responded, they completed the questionnaire on these parts. In addition, also the um, written consultations, the open uh, position papers type of uh, contributions, almost all of them addressed the knowledge transfer issue, and they were about 101. Just to remind you, 101 written inputs and 590 responses on the questionnaire. And um, one issue, of course, when now looking the results and presenting you the results, is to keep in mind who responded, who were the responders. And they were predominantly researchers, so 51%. And then university research organizations, funding agencies represented around 28%. Of, of, the, uh, of the responses. Next, please. <clears throat> this slide I want to highlight um, actually two or three issues. What were considered the main factors then to optimize, to improve the knowledge transfer by these responses? So the two first important um, issues were linked to the development and implementation of the GATI strategies at the university and research organization level. And if you look at the slide, uh, the, the fourth and the fifth are exactly the same, but it's asking for a knowledge transfer, developing knowledge transfer uh, strategies at the national level which we interpreted that there is a political uh, need to establish KT as a priority, both at the national level and then as a strategies at the institutional level. There is a third level which goes then to the researcher level, which, which is to increase the awareness of the researchers on the intellectual property issues and knowledge transfer issues, as well as to uh, support the knowledge transfer offices and the, the professionals uh, working in, in those uh, areas. If you look at the bottom of the slide, it indicates what were the less um, frequently agreed options uh, to be taken. And they are, most of them are on, on like binding regulations for KT or KT guidelines, or um, legislation on KT. So these were the less favorable options of possible factors how to improve knowledge transfer. Next. Um, one of the key messages what came out here, uh, and I hope this is something where we can reflect also in the, today's uh, discussion, is the matching the uh, private firms and, and public research competencies. This was clearly coming out both from the questionnaire and on the open, um, open uh, consultation part. And here again, it's it in both ways that um, it's, it's to provide maybe incentives for researchers to engage on, on knowledge transfer uh, activities but it's also to educate uh, about specific needs of academia and private sector. So exactly as I mentioned, what was very much in line on the, on the questionnaire there, 
to have increased knowledge on the IPR issues and knowledge transfer issues in general. And then, of course, to support the matchmaking uh, and the how to find these partners between the private and the public sector in order to get the, the knowledge transferred into services and products which can be put on the market. There was, we have put this last point on the slide, and um, which is a reflection, I think, if you consider also 51% uh, responders were researchers that um, kind of a finding a balance um, how to engage in the KT activities without, uh, without losing anything on, on the quality of, of the research. So this was kind of an issue coming out from the, from the consultation. I would say on this part myself that um, here I think it would even increase the, the, the quality if you can demonstrate that there is a need for it uh, to take it further. Next slide. Um, these are a couple of the highlights from the written contributions and they are very much in line um, what, what came out on the structured uh, questionnaire. And the same issues coming that um, need to, to have a stronger knowledge transfer organizations at the institution level, but also the kind of general professionalization of the KT activities, um, having maybe shared practices, networking of, of KT uh, officers and so on. Um, the other important issue here is, of course, the strategic link between the public research and the private sector and how this could be done. And there was clear message on this one that, that this is not happening through or this should not happen through legislation. It should be more of better alignment of interests, um, increasing mobility, uh, mobilities, um, purposes between the private and public sectors and strengthening in general the tools for cooperation. So, um, yeah, and here again the modest support making any KT guidelines binding. So, what all these, um, what can we kind of uh, conclude from, from the written inputs where that as I said, knowledge transfer very much uh, emphasized as an area to work on and that work is needed. And some ideas for incentives to firms um, for, um, for KT so that they should provide to reduce risk. And as well as some other measures related, for example, to the European patent, uh, development of the European patent, which is well on its way, uh, possibilities of linking KT to pre-commercial public procurement, so trying to stimulate the, uh, the cooperation between private and public side through that, and as well as the mobility between public and private sector, for example, through uh, PhD programs. And my last slide is just giving you the way forward how we have seen it. Based on this consultation and the, the results, I would say that we are probably going to the right direction, and this is what I would like to hear from you, um, your opinion on this. Um, these issues which have been put on this slide are actually what we are currently, uh, what are our plans for 2012. So we are having through the framework program, we are addressing issues to support networking and strengthening the knowledge transfer offices. Um, we are trying to facilitate the development of model contract agreements and a cross, cross, for cross-border uh, purposes. And um, as you have seen, the KT issue itself, it's very horizontal. It's a 
cross-cutting of all the other era axes. So this point here that it deals with patents, it deals with university modernization, it deals with researchers' mobility, as well as open access to make the public research uh, transparently available. Uh, it's very horizontal uh, issue, and this is also one of the priorities uh, for us. And as you know, there is the 2008 IP recommendation and the code of practice, which is working in the, in, in, uh, currently. And what we, of course, want to do is to extend it also working in all, all countries. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsi. Uh, I would suggest to run through the three presentations and to put questions afterwards, because I think that we do have a more general view. And uh, this is my reason to call for the next presentation, which is given by Pat Frain. Uh, yeah, to, to talk about Pat Frain. Uh, when I uh, focused my work on technology transfers in the mid-90s, Pat Fain was amongst the must meets and greets in technology transfer. Uh, and, I mean, uh, he uh, was amongst those preparing uh, knowledge transfer as a reasonable business, uh, preparing models, preparing and fostering organizations like Proton and others. And I do think he will share with us some interesting views on uh, knowledge transfer. Pat, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm.